What's going on, my horror friends? This is Tommy Knacker, the Horror Guy, coming at you. And today, I thought I would tackle the idea of me doing my top 10 horror movie guilty pleasures. Yeah. This was a lot harder than I thought it would be. Because what really is a guilty pleasure these days? Especially when it comes to horror movies. What is a guilty pleasure? Well, let me give you the official definition. <clears throat> Here we go. They say, It's generally a movie, TV show, or music that one enjoys, despite that it is generally not in high regard. You get it. It's hated. It's looked down on. People judge it, and sometimes rightfully so. But you still fucking love it, right? It doesn't matter. You can't explain it. You can't explain the things you love. That's, that's one of my favorite sayings. You can't explain the things you love. And in this list, I'm going to try. This video, I'm really going to try, okay? I don't have to defend myself, and neither do you guys. No, this isn't what this is about, but... We've all been there. We've all been backed into that horror movie corner before, right? Where you're talking to a group of people or, or friends or whatever or on Facebook or on a video. Who knows? And there's just that one movie or a few that you just, it's hated and it's, it's you know, but you love it. And you're trying to, you know, talk about it and give the good points. But people laugh at you and you just got to, you know, you just got to shrug your shoulders, guys, and just move on. It's it's that, who cares? It doesn't matter what you, what you hate, what you love. Who gives a shit? I don't care. As long as people treat me with respect. That's all I'm saying. We can all disagree. And I've been a wise ass too. I've been very sarcastic in the past. And recently. <laughs> depends on the topic. And depends. And it really depends how they're talking to me too. Because if they start to get a little sarcastic. And a little bit. You know what I mean? Then my uh, sarcasm starts to pick up a little bit. And then it, d it doesn't get pretty after that. But it's, it's horror movies. It's fun. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be stupid. Let's just chill out and let's have fun with this list, okay? So, I have top 10 mo horror movie guilty pleasures, but I have four honorable mentions, guys, that didn't quite crack my list. And I also included the Rotten Tomato score, not by the professional, uh, no, no, no. I went by the audience score, because to me, that's what matters. No, I don't really care, but at the same time, when I'm looking at these, I like to know the audience. That's that's us. That's our people. You know what I mean? I don't want the professionals. I want the audience score. And I want to know why. Okay, I got the I got the scores, but I don't really know why. Some of these are obvious. <laughs> I don't need an explanation, but I still love it. Here we go. So the first movie that uh, honorable mention it comes in at thirty one percent. I thought it was a little low, and that is Tales from the Crypt: Bordello of Blood. Yes, I know the Demon Knight is way better, and it is, and I think it's highly I think it's highly regarded more that it, it was the better movie, absolutely. But I hear bad things about Dale of Blood, and I kind of get it, but I kind of don't. I love this movie. I have fun with it. Uh, Dennis Miller, was it the right role for him? I don't know. I don't know about that. But, um, you know, it's it's a bordello. It's it's vampire, sexy vampire uh, prostitutes. And uh, what what do you need more? <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good time. I love Bordello of Blood. Uh, my next uh, dishonorable mention, 32%. 32%. This is, man, that's, that is mean. And that's Leprechaun. Yeah, the first one. Just the, the, the first one. Okay, not not uh, Vegas, not Space, not uh, In the Hood. It, just the first Leprechaun with Jennifer Aniston and Warwick Davis. 32%? I love Leprechaun. Uh, do I love their franchise as a whole? Mm, no, no, not Leprechaun. Nope. But there's a few that really do stick out. I thought that one of the best sequels of the bunch was the latest one. Yeah, the one without Warwick Davis, Leprechaun Returns, guys. That's really, really good. It's I, it's honestly second on my list. Check it out. But Leprechaun. My next uh, honorable mention, is 42%. And this was rough. This was rough. If you can tell from my background, you can probably figure it out. House of Wax. Yeah, the one that came out in 2005. This was fucking an awesome ride. House of Wax. It didn't make my top ten, but yeah, I can't believe. Maybe is it me, guys? But is Paris Hilton the reason why it brings it down? But no, I say bullshit because her death scene was amazing, and you get to see Paris Hilton die on screen. What more do you want? The kills were awesome. Uh, the town, the abandoned town feel was amazing. I, I I love everything about House of Wax. I really do. House of Wax is on my list, and it, I, I guess it's a guilty pleasure. Next one is, I okay, so I get this one. I watched this one recently, okay? 
And this is one of those movies, you ever see a movie when you're a kid, and you kind of remember certain scenes, and throughout your childhood and even adulthood, you, you never watch that movie again, but there's those scenes that always stuck out to you. It was recently, I was trying to remember this movie, and all I remember was a Frankenstein-looking guy was trying to defend his, I thought it was his grandparents or his parents, and there was a group of people that killed them in the house, and then he got revenge. For years, I couldn't figure this out. Finally, with Facebook group, thank you, I figured out that it was grotesque. The 1988 movie with Linda Blair. Yes, absolutely. So, grotesque is on my list, guys. And it, it comes in at 12%. Yeah, 12%. So, I get it. Okay, it, it isn't a great movie, but there's something about it that I like. And it's kind of like this... You know how people like Toxic, uh, the Toxic Avenger? Okay, I don't like that movie, but kind of like that. That I, I kind of got that with Grotesque. Um, I thought the only thing that really could have been better was the kills. That could have been better kills. I think it, I know it was low budget. Linda Blair is in this, guys. And uh, yeah, it's pretty apparent she can't act. I mean, after Exorcist, I think she was nominated for an Oscar for Exorcist. After that, it was just like, that's it, that's it. Yeah, she's in it. You would forget that she's even in it, but I don't know. There's something about grotesque that is just stupid, stupid kind of fun. It's bad. It's it's bad, but I love it. Grotesque. All right, here we go. My list. Coming in at number 10. And this has got a more love over the years, but I still find myself defending it. And it's still divided. I mean, it really is. Even after this many years, I thought people would warm, more people would warm up to it. I think I think it's an age thing. I think it's a decade thing. That's me personally. I think people back then, like I'm 45, they have accepted this sequel for what it is, and the younger crowd doesn't really accept it. I think you know where I'm going with this. Maybe not. My number 10 is Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. This 27% audience score. What? I, okay, why? Because no Michael Myers? I get it. I get it. But even when I was young, really young, this movie came out when I was like six or seven, I accepted it. I didn't care because I knew deep down Michael Myers would be back. The plot hooked me in. Is it cheesy? Is it campy? Yep, it is. Buckle up for a stupid fucking ride. But I accepted it. I, I don't know what it is. I love it. I just don't understand why it's so divided. I, and it's obviously because it's not Michael Myers. I was just lucky... To have a movie without a guy going around chasing women with a knife. It gets it gets a little dry after a while. I'm a Halloween fan, guys. I love Halloween, but you gotta change it up once in a while. You know, it's okay. Michael Myers is coming back. You know, after ends, it's not ends. It's ends for Blumhouse. But it's not the done. It's, Michael Myers isn't done, guys. Give it time. But let him rest. Let him breathe a little bit. And then you bring the season of the witch back. That's what I think you should go. No, I don't think this next movie of Halloween should be connected to Season of the Witch. Not in this movie just yet. But at least, maybe at the end scene, maybe a little teaser. You know, end credit scene. But And then you bring the Season of the Witch trilogy. And I say it should be a trilogy. Make it bigger. Make it better than the, way better than it was. They could with, with today. Just don't make it too CGI. And there you go. Halloween 3. Number 9. Again, uh, I'm probably being generous with this because I do think it's loved. But I still say 60% is pretty damn low. 60%. And this is all updated, too. Updated scores. Uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Come on. How is it 60%? Just have some fun with it. Oh, my God. Everything everything about it I just love. Everything about Killer Clowns. It's I, I got it right away. It's just one of those movies I got. And I hope they don't do a sequel. It's, it, I, no, I don't want a sequel. I don't know if that's even been brought up. I don't know if it's even in consideration. It, I, I think eventually it must. I say no way. I don't want a sequel, guys. I don't care. I don't care if they brought the original guys who played the clowns. Don't care. Don't want it. But Killer Clowns from Outer Space is my number nine. Okay. <laughs> my number eight guilty pleasure. Mm. I got this reboot, man. This reboot, it, it got me right here. It's not better than the original, don't get me wrong. Nope. Doesn't come close, but I still have a love. And it, this is at 57%, by the way. 57%. And that is the 2019 reboot of Child's Play. Yes, yes, yes. I fucking love this movie. <laughs> Guys, I don't know what it is. Mark Hamill's voice. Yeah, I mean, it could have been anybody else, really. I think Mark Hamill did okay. It didn't have to be Brad Dorff. I'm glad they went in a different direction. 
I'm not quite sure if I was totally hooked on Mark Hamill's voice for this. It, w it was fair, but I, I liked how he was more like robotic and he had controls and stuff. And the, I don't know. I just got it. It was different. Uh, Andy Barkley, I was fine with him. He was an okay actor. The mom is one of my uh, uh, movie crushes. Arby Plaza is like top of my list, so I didn't mind that. Her being a single mom. Nope. The killers were pretty solid. I don't know what it is. I like Child's Play reboot. Sue me. Number seven. Coming in... Again, I'm, su I'm surprised at this score. I'm not going to lie. I'm surprised at this score. I don't care. 50%. Maximum Overdrive. Yeah. Yeah. No, okay. This is a stupid movie. This is stupid. But how can you not have fun with Maximum Overdrive, guys? How can you not? Emilio Estevez. Cars coming to life. Anything mechanical coming to life, really. The best part was the soda machine. You know, spin out the canes and killing the kids and shit. No one was safe. The ice cream truck going down the road by itself. Creepy as shit. The Green Goblin. Mack truck. Iconic. Maximum Overdrive is my number seven. Number six. My number six guilty pleasure is from the Friday the 13th franchise. But which one? Jason X. Yes. Jason X. Oh, uh, yep. Yeah. And uh, I get into this little discussion, too. I will defend Jason X. That's one of those movies I will defend. And then people... And I hate Jason Goes to Hell. It's the worst one. I hate it. It's shit. And then people will be like, some people. So, what? you know, they're like, that's kind of hypocritical. How is Jason X any better than Jason Goes to Hell, though? I'm like... Well, one, it has Jason in it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jason Goes to Hell did not have Jason. Okay. Um, and it was just, it wasn't back to basics, but it was kind of. It's just it went in a spaceship. You know what I mean? Jason was killing people as Jason in a spaceship. Okay. Uh, Jason Goes to Hell, he was going in at people's bodies. And I don't want to see Jason as a reporter. as a. Uh, he looked like a, an insurance salesman. No. I mean, it, the, the PlayStation scene was very badass, but I don't want to see Jason as a, a bald uh, cop. Uh, and then, you know, and, and then, no, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see it. Then they introduce Jason's sister all of a sudden. She's just fucking, is it, she exists. And all of a sudden they have a house and shit. No, and then, I'm not getting into Jason Goes to Hell. I mean, those reasons alone is why Jason X is better, okay? I, I Uber Jason is badass but and I, that's one thing though I, I take away i don't like the look of jason in the beginning like the beginning jason i don't like him with hair i went over that in my last video jason should not have hair at all none so but jason x is on my list guys number five coming in at 33 percent and this one i this is another one i will defend okay it's a sequel to a stephen king classic and i'm gonna say I don't think it's better. I'm not going to say that. But do I enjoy it a little bit more? I mean, when I put it in, do I get a little bit more satisfaction from it? Yep. That's the Rage Carry 2. Yes. I think this movie is a lot of fun. I, I, I like how it... Mm, I, I, know, I, don't, I just like her story more. A little bit more. Um, it's, I mean, it's pretty much the same. But I, I don't know what it is. I like it. Um... Carrie to me has always been a, it, I mean it's iconic it's classic you can't say a lot about it but I don't know when I watch it sometimes I'm just like eh, all right eh. I don't know it's just I have a, I have a weird relationship with Carrie and that's weird to say because I do have an ex-girlfriend named Carrie so for me to say that out loud that's really weird but yeah I uh yeah the rage Carrie too number four guilty pleasure movie another sequel to a movie I to a movie I love, by the way. Yes, the, the original's great, but the sequel to me, no, it's not better, but it's a lot of fun and it's weird. It's weird. House two, the second story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love this movie. Harry Mainfredi does the uh, score in it. Um, um, what's his name? Frank Decker wrote this movie. Okay, and he's one of my favorite directors. I think. Yep, he did Night of the Creeps and he did Monster Squad. Frank Decker. Frank Decker wrote this movie. And it's, you know, it's it's pirates, it's cowboys, it's ghosts, it's zombies, it's, uh, it, uh the best part, it's, look, guys, it's a caterpillar dog. Look at that guy, look at, why is he in this movie? Couldn't tell you. Don't know, but he fits. That's all I gotta tell you, if he fits in the movie. Night, or sorry, Night of the Creeps, House 2, guys, the second story, is on my list. 
And I can't, that 42% for that one. 42%. Okay. Next one. Number three, guys. Number three is another sequel to a Stephen King movie. What do you see the trend here? Stephen King. 31% for this. Mm, I think this that's way too low. And I'm going with Pet Cemetery 2. I, yeah. I really, really enjoyed this movie. Clancy Brown, bravo. Clancy Brown was, uh, he made this movie. Uh, I, I don't know. The, the minute I, uh, my dad brought this home from the video store when he owned a video store. And I, uh, he used to make copies of movies for me all the time. And this was one of them. And I rewatched the shit out of this. I mean, I really did. I really liked this movie. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Pets, not as close to Pet Cemetery 1. New, 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 new. But it's a fair sequel. It's a lot of fun. It's kind of depressing. Yeah, I mean, because there's a few deaths in there that I'm like, wow, okay, they went with that direction. So it's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. So that's my number three, guys. Pet Cemetery 2. All right, now we're getting to the really batshit crazy movie. Weird. And I'm still disappointed that this movie came in at 44%. It's like, do you not get it? Do you not? It's like, this is the same category as like Killer Clowns. Do you not get it? Do you not have a sense of humor? This wasn't trying to be a serious horror movie. So just, oh my God, what the fuck? Ice Cream Man. Come on, Clint Howard. Just enjoy it. What is the deal? <laughs> Come on. I mean, a, a decapitated head on a giant cone. Uh, I can't. I don't need to see anymore, guys. Come on, Ice Cream Man, Clint Howard. I don't know. It's a sad world, man. It's a sad world. It's your own opinions. I get it, but... I think... Anyway. Oh, I'm getting upset. This list, list is making me upset. I'm going to end it with my number one. My number one video. Guilty Pleasure horror movie is at 41%. Still too low. Still too low. Dr. Giggles. Yes, the doctor is in. Sane. Yeah, that was his catchphrase. Oh my god. This is like... This is like... He's like the, the Arnold Schwarzenegger of serial killing. Well, Freddy Krueger's up there too, though. But his puns... He has a, the stupidest puns before he kills somebody. And he's, and he's a doctor, so... Can you imagine all the puns? And he had them. It was just... Uh, it was a fun ride. Dr. Giggles is my number one guilty pleasure. And this is hard to find on DVD. Holy shit. It's like, I, it's it's very hard to find. And I'm not willing to pay that much for it, but I, it's on my list. I need this movie. I need it. I almost won it on eBay this year. And I was going to get it for $16. And that was a steal. I know. I'm probably not looking in the right places, right? Because I thought $16 was a good deal. So, all right, Dr. Giggles is my number one guilty pleasure horror movie. I want to hear your guys' guilty pleasure horror movies, guys. Seriously, comment. I want to hear them and we can talk about it. I love that shit. I it, know it's hard. What's, what is a guilty pleasure? But we know. We know. So I want to hear them, okay? So, yeah, guys, uh, listen, heads up. Friday night at 7 p.m., I'm going to be on a podcast. It's called The Black Side Of, okay? It's with a guy named Trey. Pretty cool dude. We've been talking getting some ideas back and forth. Um, so we got an idea for Friday, 7 p.m. It's going to be a Friday the 13th, what if? Yep. We're going to have, we're going to throw back some what if uh, fright in the Friday the 13th franchise. Like, you know, what if some things didn't happen or did happen? Would they, what, how would they have changed the story? Or would it change the story? Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that, guys. So, all right. So Tommy Knock of the Horror Guy, please like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed. Until next time, take it easy, guys. Stay safe.